Hi, I'm Jason Leahy, Executive Director of the Illinois Principals Association, and it's a pleasure to have you joining us for this IPA talk. And with me today, I have Dr. Tron Young, who is the principal at Arthur Middle School down in O'Fallon. So, uh, Dr. Young, Tron, thanks so much for being with me and, and joining me for this IPA talk. Of course, uh, you know, we've had you on camera here uh, for IPA before. You were one of our feature IPA stories not that long yeah. ago. Uh, appreciate you wearing the IPA swag here on video. That's Southwestern bonus. region right here, Southwestern. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Bonus points for that, man. But, uh, but more importantly, uh, you were recently named Illinois Middle School Principal of the Year. So great congratulations to you for that. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. I feel honored and blessed. Well, it, it's great to have you with us just talking about a, about a few things. So, uh, obviously, well, today's date, just so everybody knows, we've timestamped this. It's April 9th, 2020. Uh, we're in the middle of, of remote learning, staying at home, uh, social distancing, all of that stuff as we have the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, I've asked you and, and your colleagues who are the principals of the year this year to jump on camera with me and chat a little bit about, about how that's going. So, uh just right now, you know, what's this meaning for you personally, Tron, as you're, as you're dealing with uh, social distancing for, for you and your family? Yeah, so um, right now for me personally, it's day-to-day -day care plus middle school principal. Um, so uh, you call me at the time for nap time, uh, <laughs> have a quiet uh, conversation, but it, it definitely has – taking a new meaning um, and sit back and, and I've done some reflecting during this time because we had some time, um, but it really is uh, a time where personally I have time to gauge um, myself as a leader, myself as a father, myself as a husband. Mm -hmm. um, my wife is a nurse practitioner, so she's still going in every day um, on the front lines. And so uh, I, for her and her team, for sure. Right. I truly appreciate that. And that's it. Like understanding the different aspects of that. Right. So the health side of it and then like having kids at home and mine are young where they are, um, three and one. So yeah. they don't, we don't have the remote learning on top of me being a principal, but I am still doing, you know, those sight words and those readings and getting that structure in. So and three year olds um, and one year olds, they're busy. They're right. still yeah. busy. You don't have to be remote. <laughs> yeah, you have to be engaged all the time. Like oh. you, <laughs> yep. So, I mean, that's what it is. So right now it's just um, working through it all and um, scheduling virtual staff meetings, um, trying to reach out to students either we haven't heard from or we have heard from and setting that up. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been an ever evolving. And, and I feel like now I'm, I'm probably more busy during this time of the year now than I would be if I was in the office because it'll be the downswing of things and getting ready for graduation and all those fun celebration things for the end of the year. Now it's um, relearning with everyone. I, I was telling my staff, we're all first year teachers and we're all doing it right. Um, so no need to worry. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's a terrific way to look at it. And, and it's interesting for you to kind of set it up like that. And, uh, with regards to just your time and how busy you are, you're, you're not the first person that I've, I've heard say that. Uh, in fact, I was meeting with our executive committee at IPA a little bit earlier and, and, uh, Jeff Knapp, who's our past president was saying, he goes, man, he goes, man, I'm, I'm busier than ever right now. Yeah. Just trying to make sure that I'm keeping my hands on everything. Yes. Right. I mean, that's just, and having to do that remotely it presents some challenges at times. Yep. Absolutely. So, so let me ask you, Trine, you, you kind of alluded to this just a little bit as you, as you were talking about your staff and, and the work that you're doing. So, you know, we are, in, we are now remote learning in, in Illinois and of course, in a lot of places across the country. So, you know, when you think about that for the school that you lead, you know, what, what does that look like uh, for your school? So for our school, um, I, I've really, the past three years, we've been pushing, um, engaging kids in multiple platforms of learning and giving options. So we were already one-to-one -one mm -hmm. and we were a Google-based school. So we had Google Classroom set up. We were doing some interactive things that way. Um, students were used to setting it and turning in assignments and sharing Google Docs with each other or the teacher and receiving feedback. So that helped us with the transition far as students being able to do the remote learning. But I think the harder transition was for staff um, because you don't get that face-to-face -face feedback of understanding if a kid 
truly know something, um, how to go from me giving that face-to-face direct instruction to that virtual direct instruction Mm -hmm. and what direct instruction looks like. We had a good conversation about direct instruction and what that is, right? So kids are still getting direct instruction from you if you're providing instruction. If we're just sending a packet home um, and not giving resources and lessons with that, that wouldn't be our direct instruction that we will be providing. Now, mind you, we're lucky for that, that we don't have to necessarily do packets for everyone. We do have students who do not have internet access, so working trying to get that, but those students we are creating some form of packets to have them. So we're also planning our online version compared to your offline version uh, with that and trying to, you know, reach kids where they are uh, and understanding our well-being as well as the students' well-being. So it's like trying to put that that all in together and let it work, mm-hmm. um, work out has been has been a daily task of checking in with students, checking in with teachers, um, making sure everyone's healthy, safe, but also not stressing themselves out about what they should be doing because they see someone else doing all these great things on Twitter, on Facebook, on that. And that's absolutely awesome. But we don't have to shoot for that. We have to do what's best for ourselves and for our students. Absolutely. Oh, that's a great approach. So, Tron, I, uh, you know, knowing you is, is the, the time that I have, I know uh, how relational you are, how important, you know, personal connections are yes. uh, with both students and staff. So let's let's just focus in on the kids first and foremost, because I know, uh, you know, and, and I'll just put this in here. I think the state board has done a really nice job of, of trying to get guidance and recommendations out for for schools and, and, and first leading, you know, with empathy and grace, which is absolutely the right things that we need to be doing right now. Um, you know, trying to be very careful about being overly compliance heavy, you know, particularly with, let's say, or attendance is concerned. Yes. But I do think that the that the advice that they've given with regards to making sure that we're still doing everything we can to get connected with kids and check in just to make sure they're OK uh, is, is really important for us to be doing. So, you know, what, what are you what are you and, and your team doing, you know, just to make sure if, if anything, you're staying connected with kids and and, uh, you know, making sure that first that they're around right. and then that they're okay. Because I, I will tell you, I've heard a few stories where people have shared that, like, we kids have disappeared, families have disappeared, and we, we just don't know. And, of course, that's very concerning for them. So right. I'm just curious what strategies are, are all of you deploying to, to work to check in with kids and just make sure they're doing all right? Yeah, so um, a couple things. First of all, I, I applaud my staff. My staff has, like, taken what I had as expectation, and they went here with it. And I tell them, like, it's it's amazing. Like, when I was – our ROE had a um, principal's virtual meeting with us uh, this week, and other administrators were talking about things that they have heard from the teachers about what our school is doing. So that makes me really happy. My staff has – we've unlocked emails and Google Hangouts – uh, and meets immediately. Like that was the first thing when we went from just having the act of God days to our remote learning days. Um, our students always had Google, but we never had the emails activated. So we activated those, um, teachers sent out emails, uh, teachers are having Google meets with kids having, and not just on classroom, but having like Monday morning meetings, right? Like, like just huddle wow. together. Whoever wants to get on, let's get on. I personally have taken time and every day I write five um, cards or letters to students. Uh, And I started this week doing it for staff as well. So writing notes to staff personally and sending them in the mail um, as a part of a motivation uh, thing so they can hear something from me and trying to make it personal, right? Like something I heard they're doing or some, something that they're reaching out. So they know that I care and then I'm also tagging along with them. Uh, I've opened up my calendar to have um, meetings with kids. So I sent out a calendar appointment slot where kids could schedule meetings with me to either talk or to hang out or to just catch up. And so um, I've had meetings with kids probably about every other day, um, talking with kids, connecting with kids. Uh, I've reached out and made phone calls. It was, it was really awesome. It's been, it's just been awesome. The kids are just wanting to connect, yeah. um, appreciating that we care. Um, we've done, um, I have a student that is wheelchair bound and that, um, can't have cake, can't have all those things. And mom was like, this one thing she wants is just to have a parade because she can't do anything else. So staff, community, everyone got together and went by and did a birthday parade for them. And that was the first week we were out. Uh, and it was just really awesome to see everybody connected. And that student personally emailed me and said, 
thank you and how special that was uh, to him. So um, I do believe relationships make a difference. I told teachers that if you're not hearing for kids, just check in on them, right? Check in, see if they're doing, and that may get them to do one or two assignments and that's great. And that may just let them know that you care and that's all that they need as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So then you, you mentioned writing cards and things, the staff just pivoting a little bit towards them, uh, Tron, but, but anything else that you're deploying, you know, meetings, different, different strategies there just to, to make sure you're, you're touching base with them. So uh, with, with my staff, we definitely, we have a weekly standing meeting on Mondays to check yeah. in. Um, they have, they on their own develop team level meetings outside of our meeting. Yeah. So they meet each a different day during the week as a team um, to connect with that. Um, we have a text message group, right? So going mm -hmm. in and so trying to just send some motivational quote or text or something funny and sharing with each other uh, uh, that way. So it's been that general conversation of just checking in our Mondays we have um, where we have business time and then we just have tell me about you and your life, right? Like, tell right. me about your family. How's everyone doing? Uh, Cause we all have those same worries and stress as well. Right. We, we often put those on the back burner when we put our educator hat on because we have to, but now you don't have that option of taking your hat off, right? Like, or putting it back on. It's all things all at once at all the time. Um, so trying to have them understand their well being and that balance of like, okay, you can turn off those notifications. Yeah and not answer at nine o'clock at night to a student who's working. That's, we're glad they're working, but don't feel the need to access. So some of the things as administrators, you had to learn of like, Hey, if you answer at 10, then they're always going to think that you're available at 10. That's right. You have to have that balance, right. For your, for yep. your own personal development and well being. So teaching that to staff now on that remote learning aspect is something that we've had a conversation about. Yeah, it's great to, it's really important, even though we're in a, you know, still kind of dealing with, I know it's a new normal, but we're still in this, this crisis mode and to an extent. And it's important as we're in this marathon now to, to, yeah. pro, you know, provide those appropriate boundaries. So, so Tron, just as we were getting started, you, you talked about just having some time to, to reflect on, on some various things. Uh, you know, I want to zero in on the leadership side of things. You know, when you think about leadership in this moment, uh, you know, what, what have you been thinking about? What have you been reflecting on? So uh, honestly, I was, I reflected on, um, for us, for leadership and the focus on relationships is been so crucial because parents have emailed staff, parents have emailed my superintendent, have emailed me and just saying, you know what? We took for granted the teachers we had, we took for <laughs> granted the things that you do. We, we appreciate who you are and what you do for our kids, the learning that they have developed. I didn't realize that my kid was learning these things that they are. Um, and just understanding like how, how I'm glad that we have those relationships with our community and with our parents and within our building, because if we didn't have it, I feel like during this time would be very, very rough to motivate middle school, any kid, but middle school kids, <laughs> fourth quarter, April and May to work outside of the classroom. Yeah. I know, man. I got two of them at home. I get it. I get it. I'm with you. I'm with you. But some of that relationship, right? Like not wanting to disappoint Mrs. So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so um, gets that, those things, right? Like, and when that, when they don't hear from that student and then they said, Hey, I haven't heard from you. You're normally my best student in the class that means something to them, right? Because of that relationship and that connection they had. So understanding that also it made me reflect on like, how have I been for my staff, right? Like me as a staff, I realized like I focus a lot of relationship and goal building on my students and community and I do it with my staff, but do I do that at the same level? And so understanding what that means and how that uh, interacts as a building leader, because this time, it's important, right? right? I, it's important to make sure that your staff knows that you care about them uh, as much as you care about your students and, and what you do as a leader. So um, that, re that, that, that whole cycle of that. And then also looking at um, our content. So our content yeah. and what we provide students as far as learning opportunities uh, that we're doing now during the remote learning time and how we can transition that to having a more 
student-centered learning opportunities in the classroom. And my staff know that I have like these big ideas and they know I'm, I'm a big visionary person and I tell them the vision, but they also know that I don't expect us to jump right there. But yeah. if that's the end goal, we work together as a team to see what we need to do to get to that end goal. So we've had some individual conversations of, okay, so some things that you're doing now for learning modalities that our remote learning, how can that look for like small centers where you can work with small groups of students while other students are working on these different learning tasks Mm -hmm. remotely. So then when we ever have to do remote learning, they already know how to do some of that independent learning and independent thinking. Um, So trying to embed that, but not trying to overwhelm them, but just letting them know, Oh guys, like here's a thought I had when I was reflecting on our time now. Uh, And so some teachers like already have some notes, don't worry. So (laughs) it just makes me happy um, for that. Yeah, that's great. Now, now, Tron, you mentioned content a little bit, and, and that brings to mind to me, you know, conversations that I'm hearing from school leaders a, across the state as they're as they're trying to to balance, you know, teachers. I think those, especially those that have been at it for a while, they have this idea in their mind of where they want to make sure kids are, you know, by the end of the year. And of course, we kind of not fully, but kind of have to put that aside and have to look at things in a, in a different way. Uh, and I know that there's, you know, just thoughts about you know, where do we try to have kids positioned as we think about then the next school year for them, whether that be, you know, that they're graduating high school or they're moving from eighth grade to freshman year or anywhere in between. So, so, you know, I'm, I'm guessing your you and your team have probably been talking about that, of course, as you <laughs> reference and having those kinds of conversations. So, uh-huh. um, so what are the discussions, you know, what, what are the tension that, that maybe teachers are feeling with that? And, and, uh, you know, how, how are you guys kind of processing through that at this point, even though we're, we're still kind of early here with remote learning to an extent. I know we've been, you know, out at it officially for a while, maybe unofficially longer than that. Um, but just trying to balance do no harm, as we've heard from the state board, which yeah. I think is wise, empathy, grace, obviously with that, but but also just trying to make sure that, uh, you know, we mitigate any, any I, I, I'm careful to want to say loss of learning because I, I feel like that puts too much of a stigma on that issue yeah. at this point in time, especially early on in this thing. But, um, you know, I, I just think it's interesting to, to put out there and kind of discuss, especially since you, you know, you had brought up just conversations related to content. So what, well, how are you, how are you and your team processing that, that at this point in time? Yeah, I think it was important for me to establish to teachers that the heavy lifting that they've done the three quarters will remain. Yes. So we've, we've, we've moved mountains in three quarters, right, with our students. And our growth and our data has shown our students in those three quarters. So what they've learned is not going to all of a sudden lose, right? Like we're not going to all of a sudden um, lose some of that. But what we really had to have a conversation about is, okay, so what are the things that you feel your students need to know, not want them to know, but need to know to be successful at the next grade level. Um, So everything that you've already taught, what do you believe that they still need to know or that you need to reinforce before they go to the next grade level? Mm -hmm. Uh, So I add each grade, I ask each grade level. And it can't be everything, right, Tron? It It can't can't be everything. You're right. Yeah. You're right, absolutely right. And so, and understanding that I don't expect for them to teach everything like they taught in their classroom. Right. Because you don't have the same capabilities, you don't have the same anything, right? So what does it feel that your students need to know? And then we took for each grade level, what do you wish they had coming in Mm. to you? So it was too, it was too, too focused. And it was at the very beginning, right? So as soon as we were remote learning, I tell you, as soon as they said that we were taking two weeks off, I've had my staffs. I was like, okay, you need to plan for two weeks, but let's think about what will happen if, right? So big, big, big looking, what will happen if we didn't come back right for a month or for the rest of the year, because as this is going, we don't know what it looks like. So we have to plan for worst case scenario, but hope for the best. Right. So from day one, we were already kind of talking about that. And so um, that 12 30 early dismissal, we had that conversation of that Monday before the 17th that we got out uh, of what you wish. And so we had some cross grade level conversations and curriculum discussions of like, Oh, sixth grade, man, seventh grade. I wish they really came in understanding integers. If they understood what integer was, how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, like that would help us. Equations would be all right, but if they knew this, that would be great. Just going into, and I'm like, 
all right, this is good stuff because they were thinking that and equations. Well, equations don't need to be your focus. We can reinforce, master, right? So that helps us kind of delineate some topics that um, we could we could focus on for our grade levels. But there were some hard conversations with staff about like, okay, so is that a need to know or is that you – like to teach that right like is that something you like to do or is that something that they need to have is that a standard that uh they we expect mastery on in this grade level uh, we have that and the hardest i think conversation was the no grading yeah well, so why do you think that is i think that because we we have um there's an the ideology that a grade reinforces feedback Mm -hmm. Right. So we believe that if a student gets a B, then they'll understand that that's just okay. And it right. means that they need to do better. But I think we're at a, we're at a time now where as we grew up and we may have thought that, but it's still was just a letter grade, right? An A, a B, a C, a B. Right. And so I really focused on, instead of you telling me how you're going to grade this, how are you going to give students feedback to the learning that they do? Right. So not, what grade, but hiring in the feedback for them to know how they did, because you don't get to see that verbal ah, aha moment like you do in class when you offer support. Right. So um, doing Google meets helps that helps with that um, is what we do. We don't do a lot of zoom. We do a lot of Google meets because we're a Google platform and that helps. We believe with our security purposes, yep. but we really focus on the method of feedback and not the assessment of the assignment. Interesting. And I appreciate you sharing that perspective because uh, obviously you and, and every other school and pretty much the whole country right now is wrestling right. with, with some of those types of things. Well, this has been interesting in, insight, Tron, uh, but I, I made sure to ask this question of, of all the principals of the year as, as I'm talking with you. Uh, you know, in this moment in time as, you know, as a leader, I'm a big, big believer. You have to lead yourself well first before you can lead others. You can't give to people things that you don't possess. So, you know, how are you taking care of yourself during this, this period of time? So um, one thing is, like I told my staff, I, I operate under communication during a block of time. Um, so when it comes to uh, outside of staff needs support and they text me, they know that um, my wife actually helped me learn this early in my administration is that there's no emergency email and there's no emergency text message. It's emergency, someone's going to pick up and call you. So understanding that, you know, during this time, my, stu my, my family needs me. Yeah. My wife needs me, right? So helping and supporting them is essential to me. So um, getting out on the ground and playing with my boys is definitely a bucket filler um, during this time. Um, exercising. So I, I had this commitment started at the beginning of the year of a healthier me. Uh, yeah. I want to be around long for my kids and for, you know, doing what I do. And so uh, I've started back running. Um, proud to say I've, I'm up to running three miles. Awesome. Um, That's great. Which is really awesome. Uh, and, and so doing some core and doing some exercising. So I try to do that three to four times a week during this time. I do it before, but keeping that going um, is really helpful uh, to have that outlet because otherwise get bogged down and get stressed and start thinking about things and need some of that. And then finally, um, I like to cook. So trying new recipes. And Which is why it's important that you're running, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what, what's really your favorite is. dish? What do you enjoy to cook the most? What do I enjoy to cook the most? I will be honest. Like my favorite is like some good soul food, fixing meals and trying new variations of that um, is, is nice. My birthday was on Monday. And so, um, you know, trying some healthier things. So I grilled some chicken, did some fried collard greens, had some mac and cheese, candy uh -huh. hams. But earlier that day, is when I realized I can run three miles because I knew I was going to eat bad. So I was like, you know what? We're not doing two. We're going to do three. <laughs> I'm telling you when this is all over, man, I'm, I'm coming to your place right? <laughs> for, for that. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And I, I, I don't want to lose, lose this either. The, the, the thing that your wife shared with you about no emergency text, no emergency email, that's like etchworthy. That's like etchworthy right. on a flat or <laughs> something to hang up on your wall, right? That is terrific. It really is. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. 
Well, Dr. Tron Young, pre appreciate you uh, spending a little time here with me, Illinois' Middle School Principal of the Year. Uh, all the best to you as you're working through remote learning, and uh, I just appreciate your time. Thank you, and thank uh, the Illinois Principal Association for all they're doing for us during this time. I really do appreciate you guys as well, and all other administrators. Let's work together because we are stronger and better together. Absolutely. And we all got to get bow ties to wear on Tuesday. That's right. You, right? <laughs> That's great. That's great. All right. My name is Jason Leahy, Executive Director of the Illinois Principals Association, again with Dr. Tron Young, Illinois' Middle School Principal of the Year this year, just sharing his thoughts on remote learning uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. If there's anything that IPA can do for you at any time, don't hesitate to give us a call because the phone line still is open, even right now, uh, or you can check us out on the web at ilprinciples.org. Take care.